Yes, my name is Mrs. Caroline Kedmu, and I stay in Tinder and also fellowship from St. Luke's Church in Tinder. Yes, I am an evangelist. My calling is in missions, winning souls for the kingdom of God, especially my area is door to door or person to person. And I really thank the Lord that he has used me for his glory. I have been doing this. This is my 10th year. And I have not remained the same. Praise the Lord. Um, what is about me? Yes, I am a mother. I have four boys. And uh, for three boys and one girl, I praise the Lord. Yes, let us pray. Our God and our Father, our friend, we come before you this evening. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be at your feet. Thank you, Lord, for handpicking us tonight to hear from you as our Father and our friend. King of glory, I ask you to come and speak to me and through me, O oh God. As I'm going to start talking to your children, Father, I pray for your revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That King of glory, you open our understanding, you open our ears, our hearts to receive your word. Father, I know that the things you want to teach us tonight, King of glory, I pray that you silence all other voices and only your voice will be heard in clarity, your oh God, and audibly. We thank you, Father, for all the leaders who are leading us in intercession. Thank you, King of Glory, for the team at the cathedral, for giving me opportunity to share with us this evening. Lord, have your way. May you be a center stage tonight. May you be a center stage in our lives. May you continue to reign, our oh God. Reign, reign, reign in families. Reign in your church. Reign in this nation, Uganda. Reign, reign, O oh God. Father, we bless you and exalt you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, friends, we are Amen. going to share. We are going to share from numbers. Numbers 11, Numbers chapter 11, verses 1 through 23, or even to the end. Yes, um, it's quite a long one, but uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I'll, I'll be reading as I I share, but let me read a few verses. Numbers, chapter 11, verse 1 to 23. Soon the people began to complain about their hardship, and the Lord had everything they said. I am using NLT. Then the Lord's anger blazed against them, and he sent a fire to rage among them, and he destroyed some of the people in the outskirts of the, of the camp. Then the people screamed to Moses for help, and when he prayed to the Lord, the fire stopped, verse 3. After that, the area was known as Tabera, which means the place of burning. 
because fire from the Lord had burned among, us, among them there. Then the foreign rebel who were traveling with the Israelites began to crave to crave the good things of Egypt. And the people of Israel also began to complain, all for some meat. They explained, they exclaimed, he remembered, they exclaimed, verse five. We remember the fish we used to eat for free in Egypt. And we had all the cucumber, <laughs> melons, leeks, onions, and garlic we wanted. But now our appetites are gone. All we hear, all we ever see is this manna. The manna looked like small coriander seeds, and it was pale yellow like gum raisin. The people would go out and gather it from the ground. Then, then from the ground, they made flour by grinding it with hand mills or pounding it in the mortars. Then they boiled it in a pot and made it into a flat cakes, into flat cakes. These cakes tasted like pastries baked with olive oil. The manna came down on the camp with a dew during the night. Verse 10, Moses had all the families standing in the doorways of their tents, weeping, and the Lord became extremely angry. Moses was also very aggravated. And Moses said to the Lord, why are you treating me, treating me, your servant, so harshly. Have mercy on me. What did I do to deserve the burden of all these people? Did I give birth to them? Did I bring them into the world? Why did you, why did you tell me to carry them on my arms like a mother carrying a nursing baby? How can I carry them to the land you swore to give their ancestors, ancestors? Where am I supposed to get meat? To all these people, they keep weeping to me, saying, give us meat to eat. Vodin, I can't carry all these people by myself. The Lord is far too heavy. If this is how you intend to treat me, just go ahead and kill me. Do me a favor and spare me this misery. Verse 16. Then the Lord said to Moses, gather before me 70 men who are recognized as elders and leaders of Israel. Bring them to the tabernacle to stand, to stand there with you. I will come down and talk to you there. I will talk, I will take some of the spirit that is upon you, and I will pour the spirit upon them also. They will bear the burden of the people along with you, so you will not have to carry it alone. Verse 18, and say to the people, purify yourselves for tomorrow, you will have meat to eat. You, are, you were weeping, and the Lord heard you when you cried. All for some meat, we are better off in Egypt. Now the Lord will give you meat and you will have to eat it. And it won't be for just a day or two or for five or 10 or even 20. 
verse 20, you will eat it for a whole month until you gang and are sick of it. For you have rejected the Lord who is here coming, who is here among you and you have whipped to him saying, why did we ever leave Egypt? 21. Just Moses responded to the Lord, there are 600 foot soldiers here with me and yet you say, I will give them meat for a whole month. When, uh, uh, pardon, even if we butchered all our flocks and herds, would that satisfy them? Even if we caught all the fish in the sea, would that be enough? Then the Lord said to Moses, has my arm lost its power? Now you will see whether or not my word comes true. For Moses, no, sorry, verse 24. So Moses went out and reported the Lord's words to the people. He gathered the 70 elders and stationed them around the tabernacle. Let me stop here. Praise the Lord. Yes, friends, our topic today is, our topic today is walking, walking in God by faith. Walking in God by faith. I read this uh, chapter and I was amazed. Yes, when you look at Numbers, Numbers is one of the mosaic book. It was written by Moses. And it normally talks about the Israelites being in the wilderness, wandering, murmuring, grumbling around in the wilderness for all those years. And God punished the faithless generation that experienced his redemption from Egypt. Friends, you might be thinking about, um, about what these people went through and why they, of course, why they went through because of grumbling. And even us, as even I speak now, we grumble and we forget about what the Lord has done for us. Yes, when we talk about faith, to begin with, we see faith in Hebrews, the people who walked with God, the people who had faith and obeyed the voice of God. What is faith? Faith is the confidence that what we hope for and what we do not see. In most cases, friends, according to the biblical dictionary, faith in God is trust in him based on a true understanding of who he is as revealed in the Bible. Faith in God involves an intellectual accent to the facts concerning God and a life-changing reality. In most cases, friends, yes, we are believers. We walk, the Bible tells us that as believers, we walk by faith, not by sight. But sometimes we are derailed, oh, we're going to grumble and questions and so many things. And we, 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 within no time, we start acting like the way these people acted. 
when you look at the, the, the beginning of chapter 11, our first uh, topic, our first point here is these people complained. They began, the people complained, they began with complaining the moment they left Egypt. They went through hardship. They forgot about what the Lord had done for them. They stopped even, they did not want to hear what Moses was bringing, the message he was bringing from the Lord. They focused on what they wanted. What they wanted was meat, full stop. I was reading about this and meditating upon, upon this word, and I thanked God for Africa. Yes, Africa or Uganda in particular, I thank God for the food the Lord has given Uganda. This morning I went in the market and I was seeing different kinds of foods and I was praising the Lord. And then I said, I, when I, you look at um, other people's, uh, other countries, the soils they have and how they struggle to get food from the ground, it is terrible. So these people were remembering what they had in plenty in Egypt. And sometimes we abuse what the Lord has given us. And we start worshiping the things the Lord has given us instead of worshiping the blesser, the God who has blessed us with the blessings. We forget that the, 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 the wars he has fought for us. When you are going through just a tiny challenge, you forget about the good things the Lord has given you, the wars he has fought for you. Friends, I have walked in faith with God. My testimonies are many. My first testimony, there was one time we were going to Kaberamaido for ministry and we did not have enough money. But we went, as we traveled, we went praying and we believed the Lord who opened doors. And friends, as if that was not enough, we, we, we nearly, we are, actually we are right when the ferry taking us to Kaberamaido from Nakasongola was, you know, it had already left. But I saw the hand of God, this, I don't know how the, the do they call them the drivers or the pilot or the whatever, of a ferry. I saw him return to pick us. We were four of us. Friends, that's how I got to know that walking in faith and believing in God and depending on him entirely, you will see the hand of God in your life. I saw this, um, the fairy come back, pick us, and we were overjoyed and we praised the Lord. And friends, as if that was not enough, when we got to the other side, Kabera Maido, we continued to see the hand of God, Lord healing his people, people turning from their wicked ways into Christ. I mean, the week we spent there, it was all merry making and joy, enjoying the fellowship with the brethren there. What am I saying? Friends, when you depend on God entirely, you will see his hand on a daily basis. I have seen God in my children's lives uh, since my husband passed on. I have seen God work. I have seen God provide. I have seen God open doors. I have seen God in my life. And how I am encouraging you this evening that it is good to entirely depend on God in faith. Friends, I know things will come our way. Yes, 
Complaining will be there, but let us not forget that our God is everything to us. He provides. You can see that after God brought the Israelites out of Egypt, they wandered in the desert 40 years. But he continued to provide. He provided for them day and night. Friends, the Lord has provided for you and me day and night. They needed, they needed much more. But friends, the Lord gave them what they needed then. They wanted more, but the Lord gave them what they needed there and then. And he provided for them, but they needed more meat, more meat. They grumbled, they grumbled, they grumbled to Moses. Moses was overwhelmed with their grumbling because the grumbling was all over. I mean, the way what uh, I, the way what, what is happening in our families, uh, these school fees, these uh, the roads are not maintained. I mean, the money is swindled. The, the, I mean, things are happening uh, not right in the church. I mean, there's so many challenges, but this is all happening, friends. Our God is watching. Our God is present. The people grumbled to Moses who went, who went before the Lord and he promised to send manna, to send them something to eat. He promised to send them whatever they needed. But friends, they continued to grumble. When you see, have you ever, I mean, given maybe I'm, uh, your parent, I'm talking to parents here, that you give someone, you give the child what, you, what, you, what he wants, but you, what you decide to give a child what he needs, and he does not appreciate what you have given them. And what do they do? They continue to grumble. They go and speak small things that the mommy has done this. I am not satisfied. I wish, I wish, I wish. But friends, the Lord's, provi the Lord's provision is there for us as his children, as believers, as long as we get to know he is our provider and only our provider is God. But what do we do, friends? We continue to pray. We continue to grumble. We don't continue. I mean, you can even decide. There's a, a, a friend of mine who said that, Carol, I have prayed and fasted and the Lord has not answered me. The Lord has not provided for me. But the Bible says that we don't, get, we, don't, we don't get the right answers because we do not ask of God. But our God is able, friends. When we walk with our God by faith and we know and depend on him entirely, friends, he's there to listen to our prayers. He's there to hear us as his children. He wants us to speak to him on a daily basis. But what happened? The Lord's anger was, I mean, excel, it, it got on the higher level. And what did he do? He sent fire from, I mean, he sent fire from above among the, amongst the people to consume some of the outcasts of the camp, to show them that he is God and he has heard them grumble. Friends, are there some things that have happened in your life when the Lord wants your attention, telling me that I am around, I am near you, walk with me, allow me to walk with you in faith. Or we normally want to hear what we want to hear, what our itching ears want to hear. When we see the Lord how he, 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 he provided for these people. But for them, what they wanted, they wanted a particular meal 
on a daily basis. What did they want? They wanted meat. Meat, meat, and meat. Not any other thing. Not the word of God, but meat. Friends, we have all at attended parties. And as believers, you see, when it comes to food, people forget that they are, we forget that we are believers. And now you say that you know Jesus. That let me use now. Let it, it is now the time for my stomach. And then you forget about everything. Friends, faith in God is to be genuine. We must accept him as he has revealed himself to us. The Lord, friends, has revealed to us in many ways. We are not allowed to accept the attribute, other attributes, but only the attributes of God that will, that will make us stand in him with faith. But normally we get confused, we get derailed we, by these other voices they are telling you this, believe in this, believe in the other. I mean, within no time, you start listening to the other, other gospel, what Paul was telling us. And then you stop even reading the Bible. You stop talking to your God. You stop communing with, I mean, fellowshipping with the believers. I mean, within no time, you're lost. You're, you're, you know, your life is changed and, you know, you're no longer. Uh, like the one who uh, 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 the other believer but you are on the other side of the road friends what is that that is bringing us not to walk with God the gospel is telling us this evening people grumbled the Israelites grumbled they grumbled and continued grumbled grumbling because they wanted fish, cucumber, watermelon, onions, garlic. They complained and Moses became so angry. And he also started asking them questions. He asked them that, did I give birth to these children, to, to, to these people? He asked the Lord because he was overwhelmed with the weeping he was overwhelmed with the questions and grumbling in many ways friends we grumble even when we know the answer we grumble even when we know that the holy spirit has spoken to us that you wait you're going to have this on on i mean this after after so many months after so many days after so many years but we continue to grumble but we, let us remember that our Lord is the provider. Friends, as I was, as I was uh, preparing for this, then the Holy Spirit dropped this song, which goes that just as I am without one plea, but that you die to set me free and that your bidding come to me O Lamb of God I come I come Friends, what is that that is hindering you? from entirely surrendering to God, to come into his presence, to tell him to hold your right hand with his righteous right hand, to accept him to walk with you on a daily basis, to go before him and ask for forgiveness for grumbling and asking questions. You have asked questions and you have not heed to his voice because you're grumbling, you're asking questions, you are asking this and the other. Instead of praying, you're asking questions. Instead of praying, you're grumbling. Instead of encouraging a, a person, you say that there are certain foods you want to eat other than the food 
which is the spiritual food, the word of God? Are we remembering the good things that the Lord has has given us, all the things that the, the wars has fought for us? There are many things that the Lord has fought for us, the wars, but we have forgotten. And what are we doing? We are only focusing on eating food, a particular food. Friends, when we look at our, our verse, our ten, um, the 10th verse, Moses had all the families standing in the doorways in their tents weeping, and the Lord became extremely angry. Friends, sometimes when you see what is happening in our country, the floods, the killings, the what, I sometimes think that have we angered our God to that extreme? Have we gone before the Lord and asked for forgiveness? Friends, as believers, do we stand and ask Lord to forgive us so that we are able even to forgive the people who wronged us, or we continue in anger, bitterness, and rage. As believers, do we still have to use wrong words or bad words, obscene words, or the words of the world, and we bring them into, into, into the church, abusing each other, you know, fighting each other? Is that in order? When you see people getting microphones, I mean, this other church is abusing the past of the other side. Is that what we were called for? Is that walking by faith with our God? There are so many things that are happening in church. Are we really doing the right thing as believers? Are we walking with our God on the right way in, in, on a daily basis? When you think, just ponder about all these questions. What haven't you done? What have you done as a believer to see to it that things change? We know that our God is our everything. His hand is not too short to save. When we read in, when we read in Isaiah, Isaiah 59, verse one and two say that, listen, the Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor is, He's here too deaf to hear when you call. Verse 2, it is your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and he will not listen anymore. Friends, have we sinned too much that the Lord, the Lord will not hear our prayers? The Lord will not ask, will, will not uh, hear when we ask. But remember, friends, our God is so faithful. Our God is so merciful. He's so forgiving. The Bible says that He does not remember our sin anymore as long as we go before Him and ask for forgiveness. He remains faithful even though we become unfaithful. He's ready to forgive us on a daily basis as long as we genuinely return to him in repentance. Moses encouraged these people that, I mean, he was encouraging the Israelites to be ready for tomorrow. Moses was the kind of person who had faith in his God. 
Moses was a leader. Moses was an intercessor. Moses exercised his, his leadership in a good way. He was a listener. He would listen to these people, all their grumbling and whatever, and he would get back to God and tell him that this is what is happening. Friends, as we go through these scriptures, this chapter, then the Lord said to Moses, has my hand lost its power? Friends, there is no way the Lord's hand can lose its power to save us. There is no way the hand, that the Lord's hand can lose its power to provide for us, to protect us to transform us. The hand of God is everything to us. Praise the Lord. When we look at our 11th verse, and Moses said to the Lord, why are you treating me your servant so harshly. Have mercy on me. What did I do to deserve the burden of all these people? Friends, as I have told you, Moses was a leader. We are all leaders, starting from home, our homes. Even when you look at the, the you, you could be a firstborn or, uh, or a leader in a way, a mother, father, a wife, a husband, you are a leader. And such situations come and you need to act as a leader. What do we do? Who do we turn to? Especially when things are not going right? Do we sit and watch things go wrong, continue to go wrong? Or we go before, as believers, we go before our God. Moses was overwhelmed. Moses needed help. And he needed immediate help. He wanted, you know, he wanted to, you know, to, to, to please the, all these people because he needed enough food for months. But then when you read here, I don't know what really went uh, about in Moses' mind to think that the people are too many and the Lord will not provide. He had also forgotten how the Lord provided way back in all. Those days, God continued to provide. In the years they spent, God continued to provide. Friends, our God is a provider. How I pray that we as, as, as believers will stop complaining, but we only accept God to walk with us. The complainers went among their families and spread their complaints. All the people began to wail. Can you imagine? Even those others who were not wailing, they began to wail. They began grumbling. I mean, they wanted everything they had in Egypt to be on their menu. And they even talked about how they have lost the appetite. Because the other diet, the balanced diet in Egypt was superb. And this other side, they, in the promised land, there is nothing. Friends, I'm not saying that, that every day it is, it is a Sunday whereby I have a buffet and, and everything. No. There are times that things come and they are not well. But me as Carol and my family, what do we do? we cry out to our God, the one who does not sleep nor slumber, the one who, who feeds those birds in the air, he's the person who feeds us as his children. 
there is, I, I normally say that it is very good to walk in the spirit, led by the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. When we are led by the Holy Spirit, friends, we are walking in faith. Asking God for, for, for better answers. The Lord has the better answers for each one of us. But we tend not to ask of him. We don't want to ask. We first, what we normally do is to grumble, friends. When will you lose your loved one? What do you say that God, why? Why is it me? Then you say that why, why not you? Who else? Who else did you want that to happen to? If it's not you. Friends, let us believe that God has the power to save us and pray that God would show his power in our lives. Let the Lord show his power in our families. Let the Lord show his power in the church. Let the Lord show his power in this nation. And our lives will be transformed by his power. Yes, our lives are full of struggles. And we start to wonder and ponder on what we are going through other than what our God is going to do in our lives. When you, so you talk about, when we see what these people went, went through, yes, they went through a lot. Those are many years in the wilderness, many years in, I mean, wandering around. But the Lord remained faithful. Let us remember that our God, our creator, he created us and he knows our tomorrow. He knows everything that concerns us. God is internal, but for us, our lives are passing. God knows our ending. He knows our beginning up to the end. He knows everything about us. Let us know that walking with him, he will show us the things that we do not know about even ourselves, the things that we do not know about our spouses, our, our children, our, the nation, and even the church. But let us try to understand that our God is able. Our God is faithful. Our God wants to walk with us on a daily basis. Our God does not want to see his people perish without getting to know who he is. I have experienced a number, uh, a number of attacks, especially when I go out for door to door. There's one time we met a man down in Chigowa and the he, he came out with a panga and he asked us that, have you come to take my land? Raising the panga, we told him, we have come to share the gospel with you. Then he put down the panga. Friends, if it was not faith in me and the, the lady I was, I, I was with, she tried to hide behind me as if I was a shield. But that was faith. It takes faith to do the will of God. It takes faith to obey, trust and obey, and we shall see results. What has not God done to convince mankind that his power is always unlimited, friends. God's power is unlimited. And yet man is still ready to fall into the weaknesses of thinking that there are circumstances in which the power of God cannot afford. There's one time we went, I have many times, I went, I went for ministry in Luero. And they told me that um, when it was a, a session of healing and deliverance, 
So one of the relatives of the lady told me that eh, so many people have prayed for that woman and uh, she has never, I mean, she could not uh, yield to the, to the prayers. This lady was bound, has, had been bound for some time. But friends, her problem was getting, I mean, she got the problem from a dad who decided to initiate her, initiate her to satanism so that he may get wealthy. And he did to whatever he did. But friends, by faith, the Lord delivered this lady. And what I am here to testify, the whole family of 40 in number, inclusive the dad, went up where he had put his uh, whatever in the basket. It was in the, in the ceiling. He brought it down in the basket and we burnt those things in faith and 40 members of that family received Christ as their Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. It is by faith that we go out there to preach the gospel. By faith, we see the Lord's hand save his people and redeem the, cap the captives free. Moses Hard testimonies the way I am testifying now. How the Lord provided the Israelites with food on a daily basis. Provided them with manna. But friends, that did not hinder them from grumbling. Yes, the Lord has provided for us, friends. But I know one or two or three people here, you have ever grumbled in situation or situations that have ever happened to you. Maybe the child has done, has brought a bad report, or things are not going right at the workplace. And what happens? You start grumbling. You forget that the Lord has given you air to breathe in and out. You're able to move from one place to the other. Your limbs, your body is functioning steadily. But friends, we forget that our God is our provider. Our God is the only source. He's the rock of ages. He's the one where we hide we hide in him, he's our hiding place. Praise the Lord. Verse 16. Then the Lord said to Moses, gather before me 70 men who are recognized as elders and leaders of Israel. Bring them to the tabernacle to stand there with you. I will come down and talk to you there. I will, I will take some of the spirit that is upon you and I will put the spirit upon them also. You see, friends, how our God is so generous. Our God is generous and he does not say that I am going to bless this one and not bless the other. But it is just a matter of time that our blessings will come. Our breakthrough will come. He will lift our faith up as never before. When you see the 70 leaders he chose, Moses did this by faith, choosing the 70 leaders by faith. He was led by the Holy Spirit. Friends, without the Holy Spirit, without the faith from our God, we can do nothing. 
Indeed, he poured out the Holy Spirit upon these men because the Lord wanted these leaders to help on Moses with the work of God. I normally tell people that the prayer that ministry or the work of God is not a competition. Each one of us has their own assignment. Your assignment can never be my assignment. Me, I am an evangelist by calling, and I truly know that because I was given a scripture that I must go out there and preach the gospel to all nations. Mark 16, 15. How I pray that we be one body in our God. He promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. The Lord's hand cannot be shortened in any way, friends. He's always there to provide enough for his people, enough for us, enough for the Israel as his firstborn. He is providing day and night. When we look at these passages, friends, the scripture, how I pray that we will only yearn to feed on the word of God, to feed on his word on a daily basis. Originally, these people were only focusing on the physical food, not on the spiritual food. They complained in small groups. And if, after complaining from the small groups, they extended to their clans. They complained, friends. Do we attract people to complain? Especially when things are not going right in our church? Do we complain in our families and extend it to other to the neighbors and the clan? Think about, are you a complainer? That you complain about everything and then anything. For you, you're there to complain. You're there to grumble. You're there to ask questions. You're just interested in complaining day and night. Misery is, your, is on your menu. Every time grumble, every time, I mean, you have questions. But the Lord placed his spirit upon the elders. The outward signs that the spirit was upon them was a vocal manifestation. They prophesied, friends. They prophesied and Moses was not, wanted all, each one of them to prophesy. All to prophesy in the name of God, all to prophesy in faith. He was not selfish that I should only be me as a prophet. No. These 70 men saw the hand of God because the hand of God is not too short. Friends, we are talking about walking with God by faith. I have given you my testimony, how I have walked with God. I am continuing to walk with God because God is everything to me. I have seen him deliver, deliver me from captivity, my family. I have seen him free me from certain bondages. How I pray, friends, that we shall walk in faith every other day. Let us know that our God is a provider. Let us not grumble the way these people grumbled. 
let us deal with our selfishness. Let us not die to sin and like uh, and ask that Jesus Christ to be alive in us. Praise the Lord. Another statement I want to bring us, I, I bring to us this evening is let us be disciplined, friends. While walking with God in faith, with God by faith, we need to be disciplined. Disciplined the way we speak, disciplined the way we walk, disciplined the way we do things. Remember, we are a letter out there. We are the gospel out there. We are the gospel in our families. We are a letter at our places of work. We are the letters in the church. We are the letters on the, law, on the, on the road. Discipline is key in every, everything we do. The second matter here is that the complaint of Moses regarding his frustration of leadership. As a leader, I have already highlighted about that. As a leader, sometimes you become frustrated. You're working, you're working with God by faith, but people start grumbling, belittling you, doing, talking about this and the other about you. You become frustrated in leadership. But just because Moses was, had a calling upon his life, he did not stop. He kept on seeking the face of God. He kept on asking God. Yes, he was angry about what the Lord was doing and asked him question, did I, did I uh, this is my children? Why have you given me this burden? Why am I... Am I, am I the one supposed to look after them? Am I supposed to give them food? Am I supposed to do this and the other? He was mad and angry and frustrated in his leadership. Friends, how I pray that while we lead others, let us accept God to prune us and walk with our God by faith. When we walk, with God by faith, friends, we can be transformed. We see God's response. We hear his voice. I'm sure I have ever testified how I was a fighter. I would uh, fight with whoever would talk about me. And I would not mind where we are, but I have seen transformation in my life. Being a leader and in being in Christ, I'm seeing transformation in my life on a daily basis. I used to quarrel, I no longer quarrel. I used to use my mouth to utter words that are not worthy. When I read in Ephesians chapter four, that do not let the awesome word come from your mouth, but only that is pleasing to that, that who is listening, I'm paraphrasing. I stopped quarreling. I stopped fighting. I have seen the hand of God in my life. The Lord delivered me from them all. And he's still doing a good work. Yes, challenges come. But I am more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer because Jesus Christ overcame. When we continue walking with God by faith, we shall, we shall trust and obey what he's instructing us. 
most cases we don't want to obey and trust in God, whatever instruction he has given us. We want to do what we want. Friends, I obeyed what I didn't want to do. And God sent me to a Bible college. I did not want to go and do theology. I heard the first voice, the message in the, in the, in the dream, and the second one, and the third one was so audible. I was in my bathroom. Friends, I kept on telling God the list of things I'm, I was doing, and I was focusing on that. I had projects that I needed to fulfill and complete first, as if he doesn't know. But the moment I obeyed, I saw his hand, friends. He paid for me the tuition for the two years. And since then, friends, I have never remained the same. Trusting and obeying the voice of God. Walking with God by faith. Allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. Don't ask questions, just do exactly what the instruction is saying that if the Lord is telling you to do A, B, C, D, please do it. And you'll see what the Lord will do in your life. The Lord once is reminding us that let us trust him entirely. He can do everything. He can do the unthinkable. He can do something that you do not expect. He will react, especially when you least expect him. His reaction is pointed primarily towards God. Our, our, I mean, the leadership of Moses was, his reaction was pointed primarily towards God. He, need, he knew who God was, much as he asked questions, but he knew that the Lord would provide. Yes, it was because of anger. Remember, Moses had that weakness of, short, of being a short-tempered man. But the Lord saw him through all these challenges. Friends, have you been walking faithless? Is the enemy bringing faithless in you, fear in you to start again? Are there particular areas the Lord wants you to change or to go, particular places to go to? And you don't have that kind of faith like Moses had. You don't have the kind of, of faith that the people in Hebrews had. There are so many examples of people who walked in faith when you read Hebrews chapter 11. Abraham walked with God by faith. He left his home and went where the Lord has told him to go. Abel walked offered by faith. He gave his offering to God by faith. When we look at Noah, Noah built a large boat to save his family from the floods. He obeyed the voice of God, the warning. Friends, are there things that we have are areas that we have disobeyed God and we have not walked with him in faith. When you see all these are examples in the Bible, the people who walked with God, the people who stood in the gap, 
the gap for the rest. When you see Esther, Esther went before the king. It was by faith. Yes, he they fasted with, with her people and everyone and the goats and cows and what, they fasted. But that was faith, friends. She had that extra faith that when she goes before the king, the king will save her people. Friends, we need faith from our God. We need to ask our God to give us whatever it takes to obey him and trust him. Yes, we get frustrated sometimes and maybe we're praying and things are not working. Our, I mean, the, the, the prayers are not answered. But the Bible is telling us that let us continue in prayer with faith. Yes, things are not going the way they're supposed to go in our families, in your marriage, the place of work. But what is the response of God? Our God is merciful. He'll gather whatever it takes for you to go through the challenge. Just walk with him by faith. You can stand and walk again. Yes, maybe you are frustrated, but don't look at what happened way back. But just depend on God in faith. You could be there, you say that for me, I think I have been rejected or not loved. I want you to stand again and ask God to help you stand. Sometimes we are rejected and we feel the world is against us. The people we love most are against us. The church is against us. The world, the nation is against us. But the hand of God is not too short to save. But it's just our iniquities that has separated us from our God that he will not hear. Friends, when we entirely go before the Lord and we repent genuinely, he's able to save us. He's able to forgive us. He's able to forget our past wrongs. He's able to give us whatever we need. For us, is our work is to trust and obey. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Friends, if you need empowerment, trust and obey. Walk in faith with God. If you need to see change in your marriage, walk by faith with God. You will see change. Change at your workplace. Change in that ministry. You are a leader. If you need change, you want to see change, friends, just trust and obey. Stand again in God with faith. Just allow God to lead your life. Allow God to lead your speech. Allow God to lead your footsteps. The way the Lord walked with Moses, allow him to walk with you and me. Remember in verse 18, so that consecrate verse 18 of uh, chapter 11.
consecrate. Friends, are we ready to be consecrated? Are we ready to receive what the Lord has in store for us? There are new things that the Lord has in store for us. There is that extra faith, the new faith that the Lord has in store for us. But have we purified ourselves, friends, in preparation for the new thing, in preparation to receive that a new kind of faith? Are we ready? Are we ready to let go and let God work in our lives? Are we ready to receive the blessings that the Lord has prepared for us? Or we are still holding on to that unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, rage? Are we ready to offload whatever we are going through and allow him into our lives again? Are we ready to encounter his presence in a new form, friends? I was meditating upon my past life And I was just thanking God. My God is so faithful. Because friends, I would not sleep without a bottle of beer. Many, many years back. I'll tell my friends, how can you sleep, go to bed with an empty head? Friends, when you allow God to be in your life, He will make you do the things he wants you to do. And I ask my God on a daily basis that God help me to die, my body to die, to sin. I just want to be alive, alive in you, my God. Bring the things you want me to do. Take me to places you want me to go. Make me see the things you want me to see. Make me speak what you only want me to speak. Make me hear what you want me to hear. Friends, as I conclude, let us remember these points, that our God is a provider. Our God He gives in abundance. You see how he promised these people that I'll give you more, not even not for one day or two by, or one month, or I mean, but for whole or weeks, but for the whole time. I'll give you and you'll eat. The word of God is power. His hand is powerful. If you're overwhelmed with frustrations in leadership, in a home, call upon that the name that is above all names. And he will be there to save you. Our second point, friends, remember that our God responds to each and every prayer. He responds, but it doesn't, it it, it matters what kind of response and whether we have understood the response. Walking with God by faith, it is a very good thing. How I pray that we are prepared to receive from him. Prepared, sanctified to receive a new blessing from him. 
to consecrate ourselves and be ready for tomorrow for what the Lord has store in a, has in store for us. Let us uh, third point. Let us remember that our God, the sufficiency of our God's power, is in abundance to meet all needs. All, all our needs, the Lord will provide. His hand is not too short to save. His hand is not too short to provide. His hand is not too short to protect us. His hand is everything to us. Friends, I am going to give back the mic to the leader, but before that, I'm going to pray for us. Yes, the Holy Spirit is telling me the people who had lost faith. And you are overwhelmed with the surroundings in your family, work, ministry. And you have te- you had taken your eyes off the Lord and you're doing your own things, your own way. But the Lord is telling us tonight, this morning, allow him again to walk with you by faith. Let us pray. Our God, our Father, our friend, thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to each one of us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for telling us how you provide in a modern sea. You provide for our needs, O oh Lord, the things that we need, not the things that we want. Lord, thank you. Father, we ask you to come back into our lives, those of us who had lost faith. Lord, give us that extra faith. We were walking in fear. Even we cannot sleep when our lights are off. Instead of having faith in you, we have fear. We are fearing the things around us. We are fearing the surroundings. We are fearing what will come tomorrow. Lord, consecrate us. Help us to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, O God. Cleanse us, O God. Break every yoke spell every infirmity, Lord, may you cleanse us, O God. What was taking away our faith for you, my God, may you break it, raise it, O Lord, from us in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for that extra faith. Lord, where we have fallen short of your glory, forgive us. Where we have grumbled as a family, as a church, as a nation, we ask you to forgive us, oh God. God, you are a God who answers prayer. You are a God who forgives us. You are a God who does not remember our sin anymore. Lord, forgive us. Renew us, oh God. Continue to preserve our lives, oh God. Continue to reconcile us back to you, O God, our Father and our God. You are our running place, Elohim. You knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb, and you set us apart, O God, for your glory. Father, we asking you this morning to help us trust you and obey 
your instructions and do exactly what you want us to do. Father, I continue to put all leaders into your hands. King of glory, may you lead them. Lord, you led Moses. You led most of the leaders in the Bible. Father, lead us as leaders, as we lead others, oh God. We ask you, King of glory, to help us walk with you by faith. Take away all the distractions and interruptions of God. We want to focus on you as our God and Savior, as our friend, our firm foundation, our running place, the one who fights for us. Lord, we surrender. We surrender our lives into your hands, Lord. Our families into your hands. The church into your hands. The nation into your hands. Lord, have your way. Take a center stage in our lives, oh God. Father, where the enemy had taken away everything, especially faith, Lord, bring us faith this morning. May we entirely, Lord, be depending on you. May we depend on you on everything, oh God. Lord, the enemy has brought destructions, has put so much before us. Father, how I pray this morning that we shall choose to walk with you day and night. We shall choose to read your word, feed on your manner, feed on your word day and night. Because Lord, your word is strength. Your word is breath. Your word is light unto our feet. Your word is everything. Father, have your way. King of glory, pray that our children will walk with you. Husbands, wives will walk with you. Leaders will walk with you in faith, O oh Lord. Father, we want to walk with you. Where we have been distracted, where we had gone astray, we were doing our own things, Lord, we ask you to bring us back on the right track. Father, you know everything about us. Even when we are not sure about ourselves, Lord, you know. Because you know our future. Our future is in your hands and it is before you, oh God. Father, how I pray that, Lord, you alone lead us. Pour out the Holy Spirit upon us, O oh Lord. The way you did pour the Holy Spirit on these 70 men. Father, we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit afresh on us. Fill us, O oh Lord, fill us afresh. We are yearning to be filled by you, O oh God. Fill us, O oh God. Fill our leaders with the Holy Spirit. Fill husbands and wives with the Holy Spirit. Fill our children with the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask you to correct us. We ask you, King of glory, to hold our right hand with your righteous right hand. We ask you, King of glory, where we are wounded, bind the wounds and heal them. Where we have wounded others, Lord, forgive us. Where we have used our mouths to injure people, 
because words are like arrows. They pierce. Lord, have mercy and cleanse our mouths with the precious blood of Jesus. Lord, transform the way we speak. Transform us to your likeness. The way we walk, the way we do things, oh God. Father, above all, teach us how to love one another. Teach us to pray for one another. Teach us how to forgive one another. And help us start afresh. Lord, without you, we are nothing. Father, we are the clay and you are the potter. Father, rebuild us. Rebuild our hearts. Rebuild the way we think. Rebuild the way we speak. Rebuild the way we walk, oh God. Father, we want to walk in another level of faith. You want to walk in faith with you, oh God. You want to be good listeners like Moses did. He listened to you and he delivered the message to your people, the Israelites, oh God. Father, help us to listen. Help us to trust and obey. Help us, oh Lord, to do your will. Father, how I pray that all those who are on this call, Lord, when they call up upon your name, they will remember that your hand is not too short to save. That Lord, you who provides, who protects, who loves us, Father, continue to remind us your goodness. Continue to, to, continue to remind us, Lord, on your promises. Because, Lord, your promises are yes and amen. When you promise, Lord, you fulfill. You're not man to lie. You promise the seventh men of the Holy Spirit, Lord, you give them. You promised the Israelites food. Father, you gave them food. You gave them manna on a daily basis. Much as they grumbled and they became unfaithful, Father, you remained faithful. Lord, sometimes we become unfaithful, but our God, you are a faithful God. Father, how I pray, keep us in faith and keep us in check. That when we move out of our homes, we'll remember that you are with us. You're walking with us. You're holding our hands, O oh Lord. Father, hold our hand. Hold the hands of our children, O oh God, as they go back to school. Hold their hands. Hold the hands of the leaders, O oh God. Hold a hand, O oh God. Father, where we feel overwhelmed, hold our hands, O oh God. Walk with us. Lord, where our bones, our legs are giving way, they are tired because of the situations around us, walk with us, O oh God. As a family, Lord, walk with us. As the Church of Christ, walk with us. As a nation, Uganda, Lord, walk with us. There's so many things that are happening, oh God. Blood shed is a lot. Lord, walk with us. Father, we pray that we shall value human, dear God. We shall value the people you created and placed in our hands. Lord, walk with us. And may you soften our hearts, oh God. That, Lord, we shall value each other's lives. May you take away the heart of stone, O oh God. And insert in us the heart of flesh. 
that, Lord, we shall love one another and forgive one another. Lord, may we not continue grumbling that, Father, may we always give thanks because you say in your word that give thanks in every situation. Lord, remind us to give thanks, to give you thanks all the time. Father, we thank you for the leaders at the cathedral. We thank you for each and every clergy in the Diocese of Kampala and the province at large. Continue to anoint them to do your work, O oh God. As they lead us, God, may you lead them, O oh God. May you walk with them in faith. Father, I pray for each and every leader on the call this morning that Father will anoint them, consecrate them, O oh God. Father, may we be teachable and sendable. Give us that teachable spirit and prepare us for tomorrow. Prepare us for the blessings of God that you're going to give us. That, Lord, you find us ready for them. We thank you, King of glory. We bless you in Jesus' name. Back to you, my dear brother. Thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The Lord Amen. is good. The Lord is good. Thank you so very much, our sister uh, Caroline. Oh, you are such a gift to, to the body of Christ at such a time as this. And um, uh, this was my night. I don't know about the rest, but uh, I'm glad I did not miss this night because. Did I have questions? Very many. Did was I grumbling? Oh, <laughs> this was my night. And uh, thank you, friends. I know we have a time we set to end, and my intention is not to to um, what's the word to stumble you, but I I I would want us to neatly neatly close this matter tonight. So don't be stumbled. I will, we will do our best to close within good time. But let's tie this neatly. The Lord has given us a buffet tonight. And uh, any among you who are from all saints, these things are real. These are real matters that the Lord is helping us to understand tonight and to take action upon. And uh, sometimes we pride ourselves in that name, Protestant, <laughs> and we protest everything. And the Lord is pointing a finger to this tendency of uh, grumbling and not willing to, to follow his leading. So as my brother, Aine, uh, you know, represents us to capture this before the Lord. Wow, uh, I know there is a lot here, but I pray the Spirit of God will, will give you the, the guidance that you need. But once again, thank you very much, uh, our, dear, our dear mother, our dear sister, Caroline. The Lord has greatly blessed us uh, through you. Aine, I want to, to request you to respond to this uh, in prayer before we, we hand it over back to Reverend Paulson. Friends, don't be in a rush to leave this presence. There is uh, something here that we must, uh, uh, you know, consolidate. Over to you, Aine. Thank you, Peter. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you so, so much, Sister Carol. You've really uh, spoken to many of us. I mean, we, we can't speak more about the spirit of grumbling and grudging and 
and lacking faith and lacking trust and an ability to obey. You, you broke down your points very, very well, yet so calmly. Uh, personally, I loved your, your delivery and um, you came straight out. I thank God for this. And, and as you closed off, I felt, uh, I felt that as a community, we tend to forget the manner of love that Christ, that, that God gave to us by giving us his son. And, and the song, uh, you laid aside your majesty, dropped in my spirit. Um, it had words, maybe I can go through it. You laid aside your majesty, oh God, you gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those who had, you had created. You took all my guilt and shame. You died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and on earth exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever I will love you. You are the only one who died for me gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. So I ask myself, King of Kings, how did I miss this? How did I miss your embrace? How did I miss your glory? How did I miss your salvation? How did I miss the gift of your son, Jesus Christ? How did I forget that you moved me out of captivity? How did I forget that the Egyptian was taking me in for slave? How did I forget that you laid aside your majesty and sent your son who came all the way from heaven here? How did I forget only to begin grumbling? King of kings, I give you glory. I give you honor. I thank you for your presence that is in this place, even right now, even today. My Lord and Savior, it's only fair to come to you in repentance right now. We are sorry, my Lord and Savior. We are sorry for we've harbored anger. We've harbored grudges. We've harbored grumbling. We've harbored all manner of iniquity, King of Kings. Yes, your child was speaking and said that some of us even use coarse words, O oh Lord. Father, we have sworn over our lives we've sown over our properties we've sown over everything lord we are sorry when we have only minded about physical food she broke it down very well father we have thought about only physical food in many ways we have said meat 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 yes this is manifested in so many ways my lord we are sorry we are sorry when we have really thought only about physical meat, my seat in the cathedral, my parking spot in the cathedral, my fellowship in the cathedral, my, 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 my. King of Kings, we are sorry when we've gotten these comfort zones and felt like we have arrived. What can we do for ourselves? What, what, what? Can we create? No, you are the creator. Lord and Savior, I am sorry. King of kings, I bring repentance on behalf of every saint in the name of Jesus. I bring repentance on behalf of my family, on behalf of my children, on behalf of my community, where I work, where I live. I bring repentance on, every, on behalf of every congregant, Father, where we have moved on our own. King of kings, where we have forgotten all the great work that you did at the cross of Calvary, but only hope to go by ourselves. We cannot, King of Kings, we cannot. Your work was magnanimous. We don't even relate to King of Kings. We are sorry. We are sorry for forgetting the great parts of life that you took us through. Yes, we crossed the Red Sea. We crossed the deserts. Lord, in that journey, you performed miracles that we never could imagine. Yes, you hammered all the army of Egypt, king of kings, drowned them all at once. In our sight, in our sight, in our sight. Only to come through grumbling. My Lord and Savior, I am sorry. My Lord and Savior, we are sorry. We did that. We choose today, king of kings, to turn away from this sin of grudging and grumbling. We choose today, we ask king of kings, that you separate us from that sin. Father, today we ask for forgiveness for all the negative and harmful words we have spoken about 
others, about ourselves, King of Kings, about our sisters, our friends, and the people that we relate with. Father, if we do not want to abuse ourselves, King of Kings, in such a way, we do not want. Maria and Savior, I pray that you seize on our lips, that we shall only speak of that which you desire for us, O oh my Lord and Savior. Transform our thoughts, King of Kings, and let us understand how marvelously you were made. You made us, O oh Lord and Savior. Change our habits, O oh Lord and Savior, that we may use our tongues only to glorify you. Our tongue shall speak hope. Our tongue shall speak faith. Our tongue shall speak trust in the name of Jesus, Father. We pour ourselves unto you, my Lord and Savior, in Jesus' name. We ask that you, O oh Lord, will forgive us when we have allowed anger. She talked about anger and bitterness. When we have allowed anger to engulf us, you look at somebody, you look at, at a priest, you look at a, at a warden, you look at a parishioner, and you're thinking what they did to you. Father, we are sorry for harboring anger. We look at brothers and sisters in our families. Some people don't even talk now. My Savior, I refuse, I refuse, O King of Kings, to be part of this. I refuse to be part of the body that harbors anger. I pray in the name of Jesus that you give us your glory, you give us your honor. Lord, that your mercy will be amongst us, O my Lord, and say that we shall desist from anger. Father, teach us how to lay down our rights. Yes, we have developed rights. We have rights for nearly everything, even those things that do not matter. Even though things that do not deserve any right to King of Kings, we have developed rights for them. We are sorry. Father, we choose to forgive in the same way. Search our hearts and make us clean. Forgive us for harboring all this anger. Equip us with a supernatural ability, O oh Lord and Savior, to forgive those who have hurt us. Guard our hearts when all the emotions, yes, all the emotions, all the stories, all tales, Keep coming back, Father. If we should meditate about the past, and my Lord and Savior, I pray it will be the past which is good, not to separate brethren. Strip our hearts of anger and replace it with the joy that comes from your throne, my Lord and Savior. You alone are mighty. You alone are awesome. You alone are glorious. You never fail in any way. Father, you never fail. Sometimes I think we don't deserve your forgiveness. Day after day, we sin and we fall short of what you have for us. We are unworthy of your mercy. But you offer it to us anyway, every morning, like your word says in Lamentations. Thank you, Lord, that when we repent and ask for forgiveness, that you remember our sins no more. Thank you, Lord. Although we still remember and may not, may not forget hard, you have given us the greatest example of forgiveness. Thank you for this gift. We choose to partake of this gift. You sent your son to walk the same on us. We walk to experience the same heart and betrayal we do. And yet we choose to forgive. He chose to forgive. Thank you for this gift of your son. I pray that we shall forget completely about these grumbling and grudges. Help us to follow Jesus' example. Remind us that prayer is one of the greatest weapons, like our sister was saying. And through continual prayer, help us to get revelation. Help us to be humble in front of our enemies. Help us to begin to soften our hearts. And King of Kings, strengthen us to worship you. You alone, O King of Kings, are mighty. You alone are awesome. Father, we are sorry when we have instead yearned for physical meat. We thank you like your sister was telling us, that we should yearn for spiritual meat. My Lord and Savior, we know that in the spirit of King of Kings, there's freedom, there's joy, there's love, there's forbearance, there's kindness. All these gifts overflow to us, O King of Kings. I pray that we shall choose to put our side behind on any sort of physical food, but only focus on the spiritual food. Yes. Your son was tested for 40 days and 40 nights. And he told the enemy that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. My Lord and Savior, I ask that you teach us how to meditate in and meditate on your word. We desist from grumbling today, my Lord and Savior. Yes, we give you glory because you deserve it. The sister taught us about uh, how our Lord is the provider. Yes, Father, we grumble even on things we thought we could handle ourselves. 
your word was very clear. The Lord told them to relax. Yes, teach us how to relax. You are Jehovah Jireh, more than enough. You who dresses the lilies of the valleys, you who feeds the birds of the air, and she to abandon. What a heart about us, O God. What about us who are in your own image? Oh Lord, we are sorry when we've forgotten that you're provider in everything. Even we are sorry when we've demeaned the food that you give to us, man. We are sorry. We are sorry for grumbling. We are sorry for forgetting our pastor, Lord and Savior. Thank you for being a provider. I thank you because you are mighty. Father, you said your servants will not lack. Your righteous ones will not lack. Father, we move in that word of providence. In the name of Jesus, everybody who is on this call and who has a desire, who has a need, who has a want, oh God, Father. Your word says you own cattle on a thousand hills. In the name of Jesus, I pray of that cattle they will partake. King of kings, you created the earth, the heavens, and everything in the earth, oh God, is yours by your hand, oh Lord, Father. Wisdom you gave unto us, oh King of kings, I pray we shall not lack. Father, touch from your bands, touch from your granaries, oh God and give fullness of your joy, give fullness of your mercy, give fullness of your wisdom. Father, your word says that the whole of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the children of God. I ask in the name of Jesus that we shall manifest, O oh God, Father, that providence will not be anything of lack, will not be anything of doubt in the name of Jesus, Father. Our sister told us to surrender and come to God. Father, we choose to surrender. Everything I have, I surrender to you, withholding nothing. We surrender to you, O Lord and Savior, because we realize in our own in our own energy, in our own power, we cannot do anything. We are nothing without you. We are nothing without your God. We are nothing without you. We cannot achieve. Father, we cannot take a step without you. Father, let it be prayer. Let it be worship let it be work let it be business father where you aren't we are only but sounding gongs we are just like that watchman who was watching in vain unless we surrender to your king of things nothing will come forth so today we just surrender to you my lord and savior tonight we just surrender and come to you for everything father for your nisi your rafa your jaira father your everything your word has told us that your hand is not too short. Your hand is not too weak. King of Kings, we are sorry for demeaning you and forgetting how giant you are, how big you are. Father, we thank you for your hand stretches out in the all earth, searching out and reaching out to all your people. We give you glory because of this, your providence, O oh Lord. We give you glory because you're always watching over us with this, your, with this, your hand, O oh God. Father, your word has told us that we, by faith we go out. Father, we choose the journey of faith. Beginning today, we choose the journey of faith. Father, we choose to refuse any manner of doubt in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you multiply the faith in each and every person on this group in the name of Jesus, in their family, in their children, in the people they relate with, the King of Kings, the faith that moves mountains. Father, your word says faith as little as a mustard seed. Father, I ask that you multiply us in this faith, O King of Kings, Father. We choose to yearn to feed on the work of God, on the word of God, beginning today. I pray in the name of Jesus that we shall have faith, just like the 70 men. If, the, if, if they had not gone around with Moses, yes, the Lord said there had to be some witnesses to go and prove the whole masses. Father, if there be 70 men on this group, in this church, I ask that the 70 men will be these people. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that it will not just be 70 by number, but 70 with faith of King of Kings to move mountains, Father. I choose to be one of the 70 in the name of Jesus, Father. I give you glory because you send us out as evangelists. You send us out as preachers. You send us out as worshipers. You send us out as prophets. Father, I ask that in the 70, we shall have a manifestation of all your glory, of all your honor, of all your mercy, that your body will be edified. I give you glory, Father, because you allow Jesus to live in us, to be alive in us, oh God. Yes, your sister hinted on this, that 
Oh Lord, we should allow Jesus to be alive in us in everything that we do, Father. May he be the point of meditation. I give you glory because you listen to us. Yes, we are challenged about having discipline. I ask that we shall have discipline, oh God, discipline of mind, discipline of thought, discipline of word, oh God, Father, discipline of tongue, that whatever we're going to say and meditate or even think about will be such as those which give you glory. You also taught us that, you know, disbelief, doubt, grumbling can cause frustration. And yes, we hear it in Moses' tongue. We hear it in Moses' speech. He was tired of the people he was leading. Father, I am sorry where I have caused my leader to be tired of me. Father, we are sorry as a cathedral where we have caused our leaders to be tired of us, O Lord and Savior, because of our grumbling nature. I pray in the name of Jesus that they will not be frustrated, O God. Increase them. Increase them in the power to believe and trust in you and nobody else, O God, Father. I ask that you surround them with people who will give them, you know, the faith to move around, O God, the faith to push through. Father, observe and provide for them a 70. Your word tells us to trust and obey. God entirely We choose today to trust and obey you. Consecrate us, O King of Kings. Father, you're a miracle worker. We put our trust and faith in you because we know that nothing is impossible with you. Just as you told Sarah about the coming birth of Isaac, I know you'll make a way when there's no way for all of us. You raised Lazarus from the dead. You made the dry bones have flesh again and then made breath enter them. Father, you look out for your people. Thank you for looking out for us. And for that, we praise you. You are the same God today as you were then. And you'll be the same God tomorrow. We believe in the power of your hand. We believe in your intervention in our lives. Our minds are silenced by the critics, but you come through to give us the faith. Father, we choose not to listen to non-believers, but choose to preach to them to come to our faith. I give you glory, King of Kings, because you arrest our unbelief. You arrest our unbelief as a source of grumbling. My Savior, you came down to us to save, to save all of us, O oh God, and told us to have faith in you. You said that with faith, you can set this mountain move and we'll go. Father, our minds know that if we believe and trust and have faith in you, we'll receive whatever we ask for in your name. We believe in you today, Jesus. We, we believe that you are Lord. We choose not to focus on the past, which is bad. We choose not to demean your power of providence. You are the creator of the heaven and earth. Erase any manner of doubt. Take it all away in the name of Jesus, Father. Take away all our unbelief. Father, we deliver ourselves into your righteous right hand. Father, we pray for strength. We put our trust in you. You have never forsaken those who seek you. Never. It's not anywhere on record. You have never let us down. I know that you have never done this and you will never do it because our life is your image. We have testimonies of your greatness. Mold us therefore into your image. Hold us close to you. Show us hmm, the maturity that we desire as Christians to move and improve our work with you. Father, Steady our trust, O oh God, in you, that no matter the waves, no matter the, 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 the storms, no matter the battles, no matter the grumbling on this earth, we declare we shall be faithful to you. Father, we choose to crush any man of fear. You tell us to put our trust in you when we are afraid. We definitely are afraid sometimes. We are afraid of things like the Israelites were that are happening in our lives. Or even then, they were not seeing a future. Father. Sometimes we're afraid of our future, afraid of our loved ones. We get hopeless. We cannot breathe. The walls are closing in and around all of us. Father, we feel the enemy near sometimes and need protection. Father, we say you come to us, dear God, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We need you now. Help us to put our hope in you. We thank you for being the rock and the shield like what the Israelites did. Thank you for being our God in whom. We can really trust. We praise you because even when we were faithless, you were there. You remained faithful to us. 
you never changed nor withdrew your love from us. Father, in your mighty power, you say that we should have faith in you so that we'll be upheld. Yes, we choose to have that faith right now. We place our faith in you. You strengthen us. Your Holy Force keeps our spirit alive and burning fiercely for you. We choose to get filled with this Holy Spirit. Father, I know that with you, we can overcome anything. With you, we can overcome every fear. Thank you for remaining faithful to chosen people. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor. We give you praise. You say that the righteous man will live by faith. There are mold us in your image and fill our hearts with your faith. Guide our actions that we can live by faith and have life in you abundantly and eternally. Cleanse all our thoughts of all impurities, dear Lord. Everything which takes us hayway, cleanse. Keep our eyes fixed on you and you alone. Help us to be steadfast in our trust in you and your scriptures that we can be able to live the right way in your sight. We give you glory, my Savior. We give you honor. We give you praise because you deserve it. In the mighty name of Jesus, I have prayed. Amen. Amen.